students. She has been my best teacher and I would not be here without her. My first year in the high school classroom was 2020. And since I had been teaching in high school and college environments for over 20 years, I thought I'd pretty much seen it all. <laughs> but 2020 was wild. <laughs> I teach English language arts to distinct groups of students, freshmen and seniors. And every day, I get to come to work with amazing young people, and I'm honored to watch them grow during their time at Murrah. When I was looking for the right fit for my high school teaching career, Murrah truly was the only place for me to be. And as I work through my third year here, I thank past me for setting up present me to become the best future me that I can be. To ask for more Jackson and the Community Foundation of Mississippi, I can only give kudos for your tireless efforts to improve the educational opportunities for our students. One of my first friends in Jackson at Millsaps College was Susan Womack, a former leader in Parents for Public Schools of Jackson. And when I learned from her of the amazing and critical work that you do to advocate for our students, I knew that JPS was not just right for Jackson, but right for my son Mark, who is now a thriving seventh grade student at Bailey APAC and the Wells Arts Program. He's not looking forward to having mom as his freshman English teacher, <laughs> but I know that he has been well prepared by our excellent educators for the challenges he will face in my class and others. <laughs> That's due to all of us, to all of you, students, teachers, administrators, parents, and community partners rowing this precious boat together. And I honor the role that your organizations have played to continually hold our leaders to account. I couldn't do my job without you doing yours. Thank you. Ms. Ebony Newsom, a second grade teacher at McLeod Elementary School where Ms. DeLacy Bridges is the principal. She has 16 years of experience, teaching experience. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Early Childhood Education, a Master of Science degree in, in Elementary Education, and a Specialist degree in Psychometry. Ms. Newsom earned the AR Star Recognition Award in 2020 and 2021 and Teen Spirit Award in 2020-2021 and the Junior League Grant for Growing Little Readers. Ms. Newsom decided to become a teacher to be a positive impact on the lives of children and to engage them in meaningful thinking and learning. Ms. Bridges says Ms. Newsom is a highly competent and organized professional who always strives to be a positive example for her students, parents, and coworkers. Her strengths converge in such a way as to render her superb candidate to receive this great recognition. Congratulations, Ms. Ebony Marshall Newsom and your principal, DeLacy Bridges. First, I would like to give honor to God for allowing everyone to arrive safely and for making this occasion possible. Thank you, Ms. Gardner and Ms. Graham. I would like to give a special shout out to my outstanding principal, Mrs. Bridges, and my outstanding assistant principal, Mrs. Benjamin, for their services, dedication, commitment to education, and for making sure that as educators, we make a difference in our scholars' lives. I would also like to give a shout out to my husband and my mother and the working family at McLeod Elementary School. I would like to thank Dr. William Merritt, Dr. Rajini Scott, Ms. Woody, my students, parents, and Dr. Eric Green, who have been actively involved in visiting schools, classrooms, working with teachers, parents, professionals, administrators, and scholars in the JPS district. Thank you. You guys look around and see all the experience in this room. It's amazing. It's just amazing. I would like all of the principals, the assistant principals of the recipients, please stand. Please stand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't think we could ever do enough to celebrate educators. For those who try their hardest and, and you know, maybe miss the mark, um, all the way up to the esteemed educators that you see sitting here who um, not only try their hardest, but um, make huge sacrifices and who knock it out of the park. They're not just working hard, they're working hard and winning. And more and more, that's my message to Team JPS. You know, we've been working hard for a lot of years, for a lot of years, right? You know, we, 
We are not a district of folks who don't work hard, who don't sacrifice, um, who, who didn't have other options, but choose to be here in Jackson Public Schools. And they choose to bring their skills and knowledge in years. Who was it, 33? 33 years in the game? Well, this is 30 for me. I know I don't look it. Thank you for saying, the, saying so. As I age, and as I age in the field, um, again, you know, I, my heart is just full, full of gratitude for all of the educators who supported me along the way, for all the educators whose lives, in, even in the tiniest way that I've touched, um, for all the children, the families, the communities that we've been able to serve, far beyond teaching young people to read or count. And so I salute these amazing, amazing educators that we have sitting here, knowing that we've got tons more out there uh, throughout JPS. We've got big, big plans for the lives that these young people will lead when they leave us. Our vision for developing young people is far beyond test scores, far beyond passing to the next grade, or even getting into college or into that trade. It's far beyond that. We're truly believing in the power that education has to transform lives. We don't say that lightly. We mean that. We get to do that kind of work every day with our most precious, precious commodities here in the city. Like, it really fills my heart. Ask for more Jackson. Y'all have been amazing partners for so many years. Thank you for continuing to see the need to lift up these amazing educators and for doing what you do to make our jobs just a little easier. Thank you, Dr. Green. That's uh, Superintendent of Level C District. <laughs> so let's celebrate JPS. So um, before we go, we also want to recognize the Assistant Superintendent. We want to recognize you all. And also to the families again, all the families of these outstanding educators. Thank you for sharing your son, daughter, niece, cousin, whoever with us on this special day. This is the first annual Jackson Public School District Special Programs Fair, and tonight we have invited all of our family and community supporters to come on out and learn more about our advanced academic and special programs. We've got all the special program schools, elementary and middle and high school, and some other special schools that are attached to high schools here. Uh, we're just here to uh, talk to the community and parents about what we have going on at different schools. So next year we will have a middle college for our rising 11th graders. This is a partnership with Jackson Public Schools and Jackson State University where our students will have the opportunity to be duly enrolled and will be able to start beginning math courses that will lead to students becoming math educators with Jackson Public Schools. Montessori is multi-age classrooms and um, we teach using hands-on materials. So it's not the traditional desks and textbooks, it's everything is hands-on as you can see here on the table. We're excited about being here tonight. We're showcasing our program, Casey. Uh, we're using a post called Arts Integration, where we integrate the arts, visual arts, dance, drama, uh, music into instruction in our regular classroom. And so we're excited about being able to work with scholars and looking to get some new scholars for next year. Choice is important for our students, and our special programs gives families and students choice about the best learning environment for their child. Today, you are getting ready to experience the summer reading kickoff celebration at the Environmental Learning Center. We had an opportunity to celebrate our high readers in the elementary, middle, and high school divisions. We had fun, we had food, and we had good, good music with those silent headphones sponsored by the United Way. Thank you to everyone that supported Team JPS. I welcome you to uh, this evening, the celebration of our summer readers and our summer reading program. As you know, over the years, Jackson Public Schools has 
uh, endeavor to really amplify and, and promote and encourage young people to uh, read and to enjoy reading over the summer, along with their bike riding and football playing and dance and swimming and all the other things and vacations to see grandma, or grandpa, all the things that we do over the summer, just trying to remind our young people that learning should never uh, be turned off and that learning can be done individually and that it doesn't have to be just about mathematics or algebra or uh, the science that we're learning in the classroom. It could very well be about the things that you are interested in. And so uh, just really excited that we've continued this legacy, this tradition of promoting reading over the summer. And so we're just so thankful that, that so many of our young people have taken on this challenge and that you as parents, as folks in the uh, young people's village, that you are helping us to promote reading. I just want to thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for being supportive of us as a school district. Uh, we've, we've tried to celebrate a bit our improvement as a school district. And we know that that does not happen without our amazing educators who are in classrooms and our amazing educators who are at home with our scholars, their first teachers. How many of you know you are the scholar's first teacher? That's not lost on you, right? I'm sure it wasn't lost on you when we sent those babies home to learn virtually. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, because we know a lot of the attitudes that our young people have about learning, about reading, about persevering through a paper or a test or a project or whatever it is, the attitudes that they have about learning, a lot of those they get from you and the things that you say to them and the ways that you encourage them and the opportunities that you give them to read something else or to try something new. So thank you, parents, sincerely, we thank you. Our accomplishments on this accountability system and our, our C rating, we know that that was largely because of the partnerships that we have with you. And so we're looking forward to continuing our, our, our rise as a school district continuing to see our young people, each and every individual young person, each and every scholar continuing to live out their purpose and to really drive their success. And so we are celebrating them, we're celebrating you. Excited to celebrate this evening, their reading uh, experiences over the summer. Please do continue to give us feedback on what you'd like to see in terms of our reading habits and traditions, how we celebrate our readers, but also the things that we're encouraging their, them to read. We're trying to be um, deliberate about the titles and the topics that we put in front of them, some fiction, some nonfiction, some people of color, some women um, as, as writers and authors, as illustrators, uh, various topics. We just want to continue to open the world up to our young people through reading. The smart people in Team JPS are the ones who are doing the heavy lifting and dreaming up all of these wonderful ways for young people to learn and uh, to engage and to enjoy learning. Because what we know is that with strong literacy skills, our scholars are unstoppable. So thank you again for being here this evening. Let's get on with the celebration. We are going to recognize our scholars who read 20 books or more at the elementary, middle, and high school divisions. We'll start with our elementary division. Harper Ngozi at Casey Elementary. She's a first grader, read 20 books. Samaya Bryant, a fourth grader at John Hopkins, read 20 books. Zoe Smith, a pre-K from McWillie, 20 books. Dylan Pierre, a first grader, McWillie, 20 books. Reginald Glenn, a second grader from McWillie, 20 books. Robert Matheny, a third grader from McWillie, 20 books. Avery Pierre, a third grader from McWillie, 20 books. Kennedy Williams from North Jackson, a first grader, 20 books. Solomon Bradley, Obama Magnet, kindergarten, 20 books. Sophia Kumniji, Obama Magnet, kindergarten, 20 books. Miles Melvin from Obama, Obama Magnet, first grader, 20 books. Hayden Redmond, Obama Magnet, first grader, 20 books. Damian Pichamutu, Obama Magnet, a second grader, 20 books. Maxwell Swoopsire, Obama Magnet, second grader, 
20 books. Haley Boyd from Obama Magnet, third grader, 20 books. Savannah Williams from Obama Magnet, fourth grader, 20 books. <laughs> Chloe Sutton, Chloe Sutton, Obama Magnet, fourth grader, 20 books. Ray John Otis, fifth, fifth grader, <laughs> fifth grader, Obama Magnet, <laughs> 20 books. All right, Jacob Elam Van Winkle, pre-K, 20 books. Arden Pierre McWilly, fourth grader, 21 books. Madison Spurlock, Obama Magnet, third grade, 22 books. Macy Woodland, Obama Magnet, fourth grader, 22 books. Hey, Macy. Caden <laughs> Frank, Obama Magnet, third grader, 27 books. Taylor Owens, McWillie, third grader, 28 books. Jalen Hughes, Casey Elementary Kindergarten, 30 books. Stella Kamniji, Obama Magnet, first grader, 30 books. Ayanna Carson, Casey Elementary, fourth grade, 31 books. Nia Ward, Casey Elementary, third grader, 35 books. Hey, Nia Ward. Mary Smith from Casey Elementary, first grader, 37 books. Christian Smith, Casey Elementary, third grader, 51 books. Alania Hatcher, Casey Elementary, third grader, 73 books. Clark Williams, a fifth grader, Bates Elementary, 25 books. Denila Parker, Obama Magnet, fourth grader, 100 books. <laughs> Avery Pierre and Dylan Pierre. All right. 17 books. All right. Congratulations, yeah. brother. Now we'll move on to the middle and high school divisions and we're recognizing those readers for 10 or more books. Jaden Williams, Brinkley, 10 books. 10 books. <laughs> yeah, 10 books. Elise Moulton from Brinkley, 10 books. All right, Demarcus Rawls from Northwest, sixth grader with 10 books. McKinley Slater from Northwest, a sixth grader with 12 books. Reagan Gale, Northwest, an eighth grader with 20 books. Serenity Moore, Bailey Apac, seventh grade, 25 books. Denai J. Trimble, Wingfield, ninth grade, 25 books. <laughs> Denari Middleton, Northwest, a sixth grader, 35 books. He's all siblings. All right, we will now recognize the district's top readers from the elementary, middle, and high school divisions. Alania Hatcher, Casey Elementary, she read 73 books. Denila Parker, Obama, Magnet, fourth grade, 100 books. Denari Middleton, Northwest, sixth grade, 35 books. Good evening. The Jackson Public School Board meeting is now called to order. Uh, board members, we have six members present. We have three in the boardroom and three on the phone. The three on the phone are Mrs. Thompson, Mrs. Hilliard, and uh, Dr. Hairston. Um, Mrs. Johnson is not able to be with us this evening. Uh, we have all had an opportunity to review the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Back to uh, Dr. Luckett has moved. Mr. Figures has second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, board members, we've also had the opportunity to review the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the November 15, 2022 regular board meeting minutes? I so move. Second. Mr. Figures has moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 
the motion carries. Um, and with that, we're on to the superintendent's report. Dr. Green. Thank you, Dr. Sivak. Uh, good evening, board members, to all of our uh, Team JPS members, our scholars and families, all of those who are joining us this evening, either in person or uh, virtually. We'll begin, as we typically do, with the latest JPS news from our instructional television team. Take it away, team. Congratulations to four outstanding JPS sixth graders at Ida B. Wells APAC and Bailey APAC who participated in the National Mott's Crayola Back to School Design Contest. Grand prize winner Sims Powell awarded a $10,000 scholarship for a design that will be featured on select Mott's apple juice packaging during the 2023 back to school season. And honorable mentions go to Griffin Ballard, Alexis Gibson, and Hudson Presley for their creative designs. For outstanding leadership as Jackson Public School Administrators, four educators recognized and honored as November's Administrators of the Month. Congratulations to Principal Katrina Crawford of Isabel Elementary School, Principal Carla Thomas of Clausell Elementary School, Principal Candace Beasley of Cardoza Middle School, and Colonel Frederick Brown, Director of the JPS JROTC program. Thank you for your service, educating scholars for the challenges of tomorrow. Recognizing the consequences of poor school attendance, Jackson Public Schools launched the Strive for Less Than Five campaign Strive for less than five. to remind and encourage JPS educators and scholars about the positive rewards of academic achievement and limiting absences from school to less than five days this year. Arrival at school on time every day and counted as present in the classroom is a JPS academic goal to ensure our scholars excel in education. For more information about Jackson Public Schools, please visit our website at www.jackson.k12.ms.us. Follow us on Facebook at Jackson Public Schools, on Twitter at JPS District, Comcast Channels 18 and 19, and YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash JPSITV. As always, we want to thank our instructional television team, um, our, our uh, public relations team in general for their support and their help in sharing some of the good news, all the things that are happening around the district and even outside of the district as it relates to JPS. Board members, um, I've got just a couple of remarks, but I do want to acknowledge that uh, Dr. Merritt and I had an opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, last week to attend the uh, National Alliance of Black School Educators um, convening the national conference, and it was in Washington, D.C. We had an opportunity to be there to learn from uh, educators from all over the country, uh, some others from the state of Mississippi and, and everywhere else, but also to share some of the good news that's happening here in Jackson Public Schools. And so um, just want you to know that the word about the good things that are happening here in Jackson Public Schools is being spread, um, that we're being asked to, um, to join panels and, and uh, conference sessions to highlight some of the work that we're doing. Um, and we're just very, very proud of that. In addition, while we were in Washington, D.C., uh, Dr. Merritt, our chief of staff, and I had an opportunity to meet with um, Representative Benny Thompson to join him in his office to meet some of his staff members, many of whom are from this general area. Some of them, uh, some of the young people are even JPS grads. Um, but also just to just to talk with him about some of the the work that we're doing, some of the efforts that we have for um, gaining additional resources to meet some of our needs, and and just some of the continued strategic work around uh, meeting the needs of our our scholars and families. So we're we're excited to have had an opportunity and an audience with Representative Thompson, uh, even as he was running out to to vote on on an issue on that day. We also had an opportunity to visit with the Deputy Superintendent uh, of Education for the U.S. Department of Education. <clears throat> this was actually um, their in, at their invitation. 
uh, to come and spend some time with them in the office to uh, talk a bit about our use of ESER funds, ARP funds, um, our efforts to uh, get to one-to-one -one in, in terms of our devices, to shore up some of the opportunities lost for learning with our scholars, supporting our educators, and our continued efforts to increase our performance. So we're on their radar. They actually reached out to have us to come and talk with them. So we're proud to be able to do that. Um, excited for the conversation. They shared a few uh, opportunities, uh, new additional funding that are um, coming down the pike. And so just excited to, to, again, be on their radar and to be able to tell the good story of the work that's happening here in Jackson Public Schools. Uh, and all the amazing people that we're representing. So just wanted to share that little bit of information with you. Uh, tonight, board members, as we typically do, um, I have an op the opportunity to, we have the opportunity to celebrate yet another of our uh, outstanding JPS scholars. This extraordinary scholar attends Wingfield High School and won first place in Region 6 for a cross country in the Super Region competition. At this time, I believe uh, Principal Roderick Wilson will join us to introduce this remarkable scholar-athlete. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine, right there, in the mic. <laughs> So Good evening, everyone. Try to make you as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> Great evening, everyone. To the Board of Trustees, Superintendent Green, thank you all for having us this evening. Uh, as he said, Braylon is one of our young scholars that's 10th uh, grade, matter of fact, and she is on the rise as a cross-country star. Luckily, we didn't have a game tonight because she's also a rising basketball player starting for our basketball team as well. Uh, her coach, Coach Champion, was wanting to be here. He got stuck in traffic, so he wasn't able to make it. But if, will everyone please give a round of applause for Ms. Bradley Davis. And if you'd like to just say a word, feel free. <laughs> Put you on the spot a little bit. Of course, you were just dying to say something, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I just want to thank my coach and administrators. They really helped me. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Just so you all know, I ran cross country for about a week and a half <laughs> as a senior. Right, yes, yes, I decided. It took me a week and a half to decide that that was not my ministry. <laughs> so there you have it. All right, board members, as you'll recall, each year, uh, scholars from each of our high schools select one of their peers to serve as their school board representative. Um, a little later in the, in the board meeting, Assistant Superintendent Mrs. Um, Lakeisha Marshall Thomas will introduce the 2022-2023 Scholar Board representatives. These young leaders will help to amplify the scholar voices on policies, procedures, programs, practices, and to address a myriad of issues that we face as a district. And I believe they've come prepared to share uh, some of their thoughts on uh, a current issue uh, that we've been discussing. I look forward to uh, presenting these scholars, scholar leaders to you later in the meeting. Um, so just know that that's coming up. Dr. Seebeck, that actually ends my remarks this evening. All right. Thank you, Dr. Green. Um, and again, congratulations on uh, just the wonderful honors. Thank you for representing Wingfield. Thank you for representing JPS. Our board attorney, uh, I'm guessing, uh, was a falcon and is a falcon. <laughs> is a falcon. <laughs> so um, lots of love for Winfield tonight. Um, 
that's it. Well, thank you for the quick superintendent's report, Dr. Green. We will continue on with the uh, board meeting. Um, we do not have any uh, participants for public comment tonight, um, but I do want to remind community members who would like to make public comments that they should email their request to Ms. Rosalind Williams at roswilliams at jackson.k12.ms.us no later than 4 p.m. the day of the meeting or appear in person in the boardroom no later than 5.15 p.m. I just want to remind everyone that uh, the public's uh, opinion and comments are important to the board. Um, next, we have information only items for one of our favorite topics of the year, and that is the introduction of our high school uh, board members, our board representatives. So I'd like to invite Ms. Lakeisha Marshall Thomas, our Assistant Superintendent for High Schools uh, to get us started with this part of the meeting. Ms. Marshall Thomas. Great evening. Good evening. Great evening. I too, Dr. Sivak, uh, love this day when we get an opportunity to um, acknowledge and you all have an opportunity to meet our student school board representatives. And so I will get started with um, some brief introductions. And so what I'll ask is, as I call your name, you all just come and just stand up at the front, okay? Our first representative is Jada Beasley. Jada is a junior at Callaway High School, and she is excited to be a voice for her school. Jada's future plans um, is to attend Jackson State University or Southern or Texas Southern, and she plans to major in music. She's currently in the band, and she wants to continue in college. Jada Beasley. All right. Stay. Um, our next representative is Tatiana Cottrell. Tatiana is actually the alternate for Forest Hill. Um, Tatiana is a senior at Forest Hill and she feels that it is an honor to serve as a voice for her school. Her goal is to study medicine and human anatomy and physiology. Thank you, Tatiana. <laughs> Terry Powell. Terry is a senior at Jim Hill High School, and um, she gets an opportunity, she says, to hone in on her speaking skills and also to serve as a leader in her school. Her goal is to attend Mississippi College and become a pediatrician. Terry Powell. Kelsey Williams. Kelsey is a senior at JPS Tougaloo Early College High School, and she wants to be a positive representation and role model for the Early College program while serving as a voice for her peers. Her future goals after graduating JTEX is to earn her associate's degree in history and complete her bachelor's at Tougaloo College, following by law school and becoming a family law attorney. <laughs> Our next representative is Willie Johnson III. Willie is a senior at Lanier High School. Um, he is excited to serve as a representative for Lanier because he recognizes that the organizational structure of the district can create a wall between decision makers and students that the district serves. Um, his plans um, after Lanier is to attend Mississippi State University and major in computer science. And he is an all-star basketball player on the basketball team. <laughs> Our next representative is Emmanuel Edwards. Emmanuel is a senior at Murrah High School. And he feels that serving on the board will enable him to participate in the administration greater than himself. He al he's always wanted to represent his peers, and now he has an opportunity to do so. His goal is to attend Mississippi State University and major in computer science. Thank you, Emmanuel. <laughs> Our next representative is Brandon Jones. Brandon attends Provine High School, and it's an opportunity for him to serve as a leader, and he loves that role. His goal is to enlist in the military and attend college for civil engineering. Nice. Okay. Great job, Brandon. <laughs> and our last representative is Azaria O'Quinn. Azaria is a senior at Wingfield High School, and um, 
her, she loves her school, and if there's any improvement needed or something her fellow peers feel strongly about that she could help with, she wants to be first on board. With that in mind, she feels that Wingfield will be a better place. Her future goals are to major in business, entrepreneurship, and to further her two current businesses. <laughs> All right. We'd love to learn about those. <laughs> In addition to our student school board representatives, we also have our administrative interns that work alongside the, um, beside the representatives in their schools. And at this time, I would like to introduce those to, um, to everyone. So at this time, if you are a mentor for your school, please stand. We have Carmen Taylor. Carmen is um, the mentor for Callaway High School. She is a 10th grade counselor there, so raise your hand. She's actually in the PhD program in administration at Jackson State University, and her goals um, are to continue and to develop as a professional school counselor to help her students grow within the counseling department. Ms. Taylor. Next, we have Sierra Payton. She's at Forest Hill High School. Just wave your hand. She's a history teacher there. She's in the administrative um, leadership program at Mississippi College. Her goal is to become an administrator on the university level. Nice. We have Olivia Cote. She is um, the interventionist at Jim Hill High School. She's in the education policy and management program at Harvard Graduate School of Education. Her goal um, is to become a high school principal. Nice. Adrian Fleming is the counselor at JTEX. I'm, I'm not sure if she's here, but um, her goal is to ensure that her students have opportunities to work with colleges and become college and career ready. Our next mentor is Ms. Makita Davis-Smith from Lanier High School. She's a lead exceptional ed teacher, senior sponsor, SGA advisor, and the new teacher mentor. She's in the Masters of Science and Education Administration program at Jackson State University, and her goal is to become Director of Exceptional Education. All right. Our next mentor is Rakesha Goler from Mara High School. She's the Dean of Students there. She's in the Specialist Program at Mississippi College, and her goal is to become an Assistant Principal and then move into a Principalship. We have Mr. Dr. Alfred Smith from Provine High School. He's the instructor of all subjects. <laughs> he teaches essentials to college literacy, dual credit public speaking, ACT prep, ELA department chair, senior class sponsor, and he's also the uh, yearbook staff advisor. He completed his PhD in education administration at Jackson State University. His goal is to become an instructor or administrator at the high school level. And lastly, we have Ms. Frankie Johnson from Wingfield High School. She's a U.S. history teacher there, department chair, after school coordinator. She completed her master's um, of administration program at Bellhaven University, and she wants to pursue a, a position in administration as well. So let's give our mentors a round of applause as well. Okay, so for just the next few minutes, um, at our last board meeting, we had a conversation about a clear book bag policy, and uh, we wanted to solicit some student voice. So at this time, we're gonna ask our student school board representatives to share some information um, from a survey that they administered to their um, classmates. They actually received over 2,172 responses um, in the survey. There were eight questions, and I will share the questions with you so that you'll be familiar with um, the questions as they come up. The first question is, do you, feel safe, do you feel that school safety is a concern among students at your school? And it wasn't just a yes or no, it was I agree, strongly agree, but then they also had to um, provide an explanation of why they selected that particular answer choice. The next question was, do you feel safe at your school? And if so, you had to explain why. The next question was, do you feel that metal detectors are effective? Do you think that weapons are brought to schools by other students? Do you think that drugs are brought to school by students? Next question, what are your thoughts on a mandatory clear book bag policy that will, that will be required for all scholars? The clear book bag would be provided for scholars and scholars would be allowed to carry a five by seven pouch in their book bags for personal items. The next, and then he had to explain their answers. 
What safety procedures would you add if not in agreement with the clear boot bag policy? So they had to provide some additional uh, procedures that, they, that could be added if not the clear boot bags. And then lastly, what are some strategies that could be used to improve school safety at your school? And so at this time, I will start off with, we have two individuals that, um, one is a cheerleader, they have a game tonight, so I'll ask Terry to come, and then Willie also has a basketball game tonight, and so he will come next. So at this time, we'll ask Terry to come and share the, the results from the survey for, for Jim Hill High School. Can you come up here? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, again, I'm Terry Powell, school board representative for Jim Hill. 278 of my classmates completed the survey of Jim Hill High School, which included 112 freshmen, 87 sophomores, 40 juniors, and 25 seniors. 119 of my classmates felt school safety was a concern. They felt this way because of student threats, hearing other students warning to harm others, and knowing about the crime rates in the city. 145 of my classmates reported feeling safe at school. They felt this way because they feel Jim Hill is a family and rarely has dangerous incidents. When those incidents occur, students said they felt it got under control quickly. 139 of my classmates felt metal detectors were effective. 150 of my classmates felt drugs are in my school and 99 of my classmates felt weapons are in my school. Clear book bag policy. 255 of my classmates disagree with the clear book bag policy because of a lack of privacy, book pack, backpack confusion because each backpack will look alike, and more open to stealing because people can see what you have inside them. According to a student, this policy will do nothing to help and is an invasion of privacy. Some solutions we came up with will be better book bag checking system, better security, and better metal detectors. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? My name is Willie Jones III, and I'm from I'm from Lanier High School. 103 of my <laughs> my mom. <laughs> One hundred and three of my one hundred and ninety two classmates felt metal de metal detectors were effective at Lanier. One hundred and twenty two of my one hundred and ninety two classmates felt drugs are at Lanier. Ninety ninety nine of my one hundred and ninety two peers felt weapons are at Lanier. Guys, um, no 192 worries. of my peers completed the survey at Lanier High School, which include 11 freshmen, 83 sophomores, 38 juniors, and 60 seniors. 39 of my 192 classmates felt school safety was a con at Lanier. 86 of my 192 classmates felt safe at Lanier. 67 of my 100, 192 classmates felt neutral about the school's safety at Lanier. 100 and 103 of my 192 classmates felt metal detectors were effective at Lanier. 122 of my 192 peers felt drugs at Lanier. Oh, felt drugs are at Lanier. 99 of my 192 classmates felt weapons are at Lanier. One well, conducting the safety survey at Lanier High School, the scholars had mixed emotions such as Lanier is a small and family oriented school for the most part. We can handle our differences. JPS is a small, smaller entity of the city of Jackson. Violence and crimes are inevitable. inevitable. Drugs are more prevalent than weapons at Lanier. The metal detectors don't deter a violator because they go off for everything. We at Lanier need more competent and reliable resource officers. The student body of Lanier High School was was surveyed and the scholars voted unanimously 
to be neutral relate, which relates to clear back backpacks. The students' emotions were as follows. Students will be targeted to death. death. Privacy is an issue as well. For safety issues, clear book bags should not be an option, but mandatory. It would be good and would possibly deter others from bringing in inappropriate items to school. Some alter alternatives for clear backpacks would, would be more resource officers, female and male, tougher security measures, and frequent checks. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Question is safety a, a concern? 371 of my classmates completed a school safety survey, which included 129 freshmen, 119 sophomores, 55 juniors, and 67 seniors. 184 of 371 strongly agreed or agreed that school safety is a concern in my school. 126 had neutral opinions. 60 of 371 strongly disagreed or disagreed that school safety is not a concern in my school. Do you feel, feel safe? 163 strongly agreed or agreed that they feel safe at school. 138 had neutral opinions. 69 of 371 strongly agreed or disagreed that they do not feel safe at school. 200 of 371 felt that metal detectors were not effective. 168 felt metal detectors were effective. 214 of 371 felt that drugs are being brought to school. 156 felt that drugs are not being brought to school. 150 feel that weapons are being brought to school. 220 of 371 felt that weapons are not being brought to school. 371 of my classmates completed the school safety survey Okay, okay. <laughs> well, the sign analysis, a clear backpack policy was presented to 278 of 371. Majority disagreed with the proposed policy. However, there were varying opinions. Clear policy, um, clear policy of sports, so why not for schools? Will reduce drugs slash weapons brought in it invades personal space or privacy. Five by seven pouch, not large enough. Invitation for deaf. There were at there were at safety procedures could be added if not in favor of clear backpacks. Guards at various doors, better or more draw searches versus patent bags. No bags at all. Digital books and laptops only. Random security checks, monitoring, restrooms more. Finally, there were asked what are some strategies that could be used to improve school safety? More security officers, outside doors locked, functional ID doors swapping to get in, armed officers versus security guards, practice with situations that may occur, threats, natural disasters, etc. Like Probably three months ago that we had a threat towards Callaway High School. Most of the kids there didn't really actually know what was going on. And after that, it was really brushed over. We didn't have no procedure, you know. It was, and that's not the first time that happened. It also did happen last year. Can, I'm sorry, can you repeat what happened? I didn't hear the event that you just described. Well, what I just described was that we had a gun threat towards Callaway High School a couple of months back. And after that, we really didn't have any safety procedure for it, nor practice any. And it did also happen last year, but it... Was the gun threat 
inside the building or was it outside the I'm asking um, was was there a potential threat inside the building or was it an external threat outside the building a call in threat about a gun inside the building they called the school to threat Callaway High School I got you okay and, and I just want to make sure I heard what, what you were sharing with us was that um, basically there wasn't a process to debrief the event or to go over what should be done with the students. What would you have done differently? Well, first we we'll start with a lockdown. Second, calming everybody down, like actually talking to the students and seeing what was actually going on because again most of the students there did not know because someone well a few students did say that there was a bomb threat some said that there was three active shooters inside the school and majority said that it was just a threat but again no one knew what was going on no one knew what was happening and some people were actually crying so but what would I do would be, you know, lock down as usual, talk to the students, and make sure that it's only a threat and not an actual active school shooting. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Tatiana from Forest Hill High School. And at Forest Hill, most of the scholars are aware of the safety hazards being enforced upon the school. Majority of my classmates do feel safe. On the other hand, they think there should be an improvement of security. The quotes are, the students here easily bring items that are not supposed to be on school grounds into the school. Many of the students are short-tempered and could easily hurt someone with objects that they bring into the school. There are things, the other one is, there are things that happen and teachers and APs don't take caution right away. It's only after the fact they are concerned. How do we feel overall about clear blue bags? We feel neutral about the clear blue bag policy. On the other hand, it would be easier to see inside. It can make people be a target for st um, being stolen from and the backpacks could easily break. Alternatives to the clear backpacks, better security searches, have administrators to conduct searches, have female officers slash administrators to check purses, school ID, ID to identify scholars, and more intruder drills. Good evening. Um, Good evening. My name is Kelsey Williams, and I'm the school board representative for the JPS Tougaloo Early College High School. So 69 out of the 119 students completed the survey, and a vast majority of the students feel safe. Okay, sorry. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. A vast majority of the students at JTEX feel safe and recognize that safety is a priority at the school. Um, some quotes say that teachers and staff have a strong concerns about student safety, ensuring teachers' doors are locked and staff walk around the um, building. Sometimes teachers communicate with each other and tell when a student is out of the classroom. Um, being on a college campus with more access, I have questioned our safety at times, but my administrators have always set boundaries and guidelines to make my classmates and I feel safe. And I think that at times, that we live in today, almost every student is worried about their safety in school. However, my classmates and, and, uh, and I know that our administrations, administrators will do everything to effectively protect us so it's not a huge concern. 
On the questions about safety, um, only 1.5% of our students feel unsafe at school. Uh, we have a very small school, so the behavioral issues and things of that nature that many bigger schools may have, we haven't really been affected with. Um, there are a couple quotes about that. They say not only are the rules stricter than in most schools, but the students are more close-knit, so it feels more like a family other than a collection of students who want nothing to do with each other. And another student said, I know that I can come to school every day without something happening unless I fall or injure myself on my own accord. So we have a very family knit or, uh, organization. It's only 29 seniors. It's around 40 freshmen. So everybody knows each other, and it's not a huge issue. Um, on metal detectors, weapons, and drugs. So um, it was divided about metal detectors. About 53% felt that they were effective, and 40, uh, about 48, 47 felt that they weren't. Um, when asked about weapons, not really anybody thinks that there are weapons in our school. There was a small percentage, and there is a bigger percentage that think drugs are being brought to the school. Um, and for the clear book bag policy. So even with the description of the 5-7 pouch, students are more are mostly opposed to the idea. Most JTEC students feel safe, but they acknowledge that there may be a helpful this may be helpful to the district. And most mentioned solution for school safety was better trained and younger security officers and better communication between students and staff. Um, additionally, more mental check-ins and talks about how to mentally deal with adversity instead of turning to violence. And I have a couple quotes about the um, clear book bag policy as well. A student said, I believe that a mandatory clear book bag policy should not be required for all scholars. Even with clear book bags being provided by the school, that makes it yet another thing that takes away students' individuality. Additionally, scholars like myself who are, use rolling book bags to not have extra tension on their backs will be severely affected. Um, Mandating clear backpacks but allowing pouches for personal items defeats, defeats the purpose of the mandate. No one can know by looking if the bag is five by seven and weapons come in all sizes. It's an invasion of privacy and with the larger schools, one person can, have, can easily find a crack in the system. So some solutions we had were a simple backpack check during entry could work or having backpacks stay in a specific area during the school day where students could get what they need and then move on. Um, talking about our experience, us being on a college campus, um, there's not so much can be done um, for everybody since we are mixed in with college students. So even if we have everything done for our procedures, we still may have an outside threat from college students. And if necessary, I would add mental health check-ins because a lot of violence is caused by unaddressed mental and emotional stress. And that's pretty much everything for us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Emilio Edwards, representing Merle High School. At my school, 305 classmates were completed the survey, and 74 were freshmen, 90 were sophomores, 84 were juniors, and 57 were seniors. 43 of the 305 classmates felt school safety was a concern at my school. Quotes from the students who felt that school safety was a concern at my school includes, no, because there is always some sort of violence taking place here, no matter what the occasion. Another one also said, no, no, because fights are a reoccurring event alongside the constant use of lighters. And then the last quote says, no, because students are here bit to be more, bit to, are meant to be more violent and put ourselves in danger because of the constant use and rise of school shootings. 142 of my 305 classmates felt school is safe to them. Quotes from the students who felt that school is safe includes, yes, because I feel like since I don't get involved with the problem children, I don't stand in the way of any harm. Another student says, yes, because we get checked every day, no matter the weather or the time. And lastly, a student says, yes, because I'm around the people that I know and the security guards alongside the safety protocols, of book bag checks, metal detectors, and door alarms. 
129 of my classmates felt that they were, 120 of my classmates felt that they were neutral about the topic. 157 of my classmates felt metal detectors were effective. 183 felt that drugs were inside of my school. And 129 classmates felt that weapons are in my school. A clear book back policy has been presented to my classmates. 289 of my 305 classmates surveyed disagree with the clear book back policy. Quotes from the students who disagree include, it destroys any type of privacy. For the students who did agree, they said, it will make people feel a lot safer knowing it is near impossible to bring in any contrabands. My classmates were also surveyed about the procedures could be added at the school if not in favor of the clear book bags. Quotes from students that says this is, how about legitimate, legitimate security, one that's not just hired from off the street, but are fit and are good for the job. Most of the security I see are older people, not fit enough to run or chase after someone if need to be. And another one says, we could have random bag checks throughout the day to disencourage the students' use and carrying of illegal items. Lastly, my classmates were also surveyed about what strategies could be used to improve school safety. The quotes included, make sure that police officers are monitoring the school inside and outside, having ID badges and automatic locks on all doors. And lastly, being, they are doing everything possible to keep students safe, excluding the morning process of bag check-ins, which could be improved. That concludes Merle. Thank you for your time. I am Brandon Jones. I am Mr. Provine. I'm from Provine High School. All right. So um, 305 of my classmates were surveyed. They completed the survey, which includes three, uh, 103 freshmen, 60 sophomores, 68 juniors, 74 uh, seniors. 34 of, the, 34 of my 305 peers felt that they was not felt that safety was not a concern. 119 of my 305 peers felt that they was neutral about the situation. 55 of my 305 peers strongly agreed that safety was a concern. 21 strongly disagreed that safety was a concern in my school. 63 of my 305 classmates felt that they were safe at our school. 49 of my 500, I mean 305 uh, classmates felt that they weren't safe at the school. 130 felt neutral about the, uh, the safety situation. Um, 18 strongly agreed that they felt safe at our school. 45 strongly disagreed about the safety at our school. One hundred fifty four of my three hundred five classmates felt metal detectors were effective at our school. One hundred twenty eight felt weapons were brought to our school. One hundred fifty five felt that uh, drugs was being brought into our school. My classmates my classmates are split on the uh, proposed clear book bad policy. While many felt it could be while many felt it could help curb some of the uh, issues around in our school safety, others believe it's an invasion of privacy. Uh, most of my classmates felt that we that we should better uh, that we should have better security in regard to improving the uh, school safety at our school. Most of my classmates also feel that we should have uh, more metal detectors. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Again, I'm Azaria O'Quinn. 
And um, 150 of my classmates completed the survey at Wingfield, which includes 44 freshmen, 38 sophomores, 28 juniors, and 40 seniors. 72 of my 150 classmates felt that uh, school safety was a concern at my school. Um, some of the things that they said were some, school, some kids are still worried about the situation that happened at my school and are still in the fear that an accident like that will happen again. Another student says, how could we be expected to learn in an unsafe environment filled with paranoia? Um, for the kids who felt safe, they said that we get our book bags checked every day and go through a metal detector, so that is enough security for them. Um, 49 of my 150 classmates felt safe, and again, they were saying the same thing as the previous question on how, why they felt safe or unsafe. And in the case of the metal detectors, 66 of my 150 classmates felt they were effective. 90 of my 150 classmates felt drugs are in the school, and 84 of my 150 classmates felt weapons are in the school. Even though school safety is a concern among students, only 11 are in agreement with the clear book bags. Most of the students feel that the five by seven pouch is not big enough for their privacy and that they'll need, and that their belongings will be taken from them and they'll become easy targets for people to steal from. So for the kids who were not in agreement with the um, school backpacks, they said that we should just do more consistent book bag checks, add more security, check restrooms frequently, and ensure that areas remain locked and secure. In order to improve school safety, students feel that we should follow a more airport-like procedure for example, have students empty their electronics and metals into a container, have them walk through the metal detector with their bags, and if it goes off, have a security guard and or administrator check the bags and have them walk back through. And if it still goes off after that, do a pat down. CDC also follows this procedure and is very effective. Thank you for your time. Hey, well, um, I want to thank the student school board representatives for their hard work um, in getting the survey out in a short notice and getting feedback, analyzing their data and preparing their reports. Also, thank you to the mentors. I hope this is some information um, for our, our board members to help um, with any decisions about the policy. Thank Thanks. you, Ms. Marshall Thomas. Yeah, I want to thank you all for doing that work, too, because this was a topic of some debate at our last school board meeting, and we were very interested in hearing from you guys, so thank you for that. Um, let me ask board members, um, and we have some on the phone as well, while we have our student representatives here, are there any questions um, that any board members would like to ask or any, any comments? I have no questions, Dr. Stevak, but I just... So appreciate the presentations. I agree wholeheartedly with what uh, Dr. Lucky has said. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hairston. Mm. Dr. Say that. <laughs> yes, Ms. Hilliard. Yes. Outstanding. That word that I would like to use in reference to these presentations by these young people. Uh, Continue to do well. Thank you, Ms. Hilliard. Ms. Thompson, anything? I'm trying to unmute, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I just want to say they did a really wonderful job, and I am uh, so glad to hear from our, our student voices and, um, and see that we have a new uh, colleagues in our student board representatives and I think all of the presentations were very good and um, the information is very helpful um, in order for us to make you know a better uh, informed decision as to what needs to happen next I, and I appreciate them so thank you thank and you. thank you Ms. Marshall Thomas for all your hard work and all of the, the uh, mentors as well that are working with the students while are preparing them for great things. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. Mr. Figures? Uh, I, I don't have any questions of these young people, uh, but I am reminded somewhere I've heard that the uh, young people shall lead them, mm -hmm. uh, or a child, more fitting, shall lead them. Uh, I think that an excellent job has been done on 
these deliberations that these young people have engaged in, and the instrument uh, reveals far more than, than what they were presented with and what they presented to us. I see some other things in there that can help guide us. I'd like to have, you know, just the d data that they presented, mm -hmm. you know. I'd really love to have that. Young folk, right on. And I, I would just add one other thing. I, I thought it was really impressive to see the seriousness with which they took what the options were and what the alternatives might be and how things could be improved beyond the clear backpack policy. And so that was really refreshing to see how seriously they took this. And yeah, great work all the way around and to the team, Ms. Marshall Thomas and, and everyone. Thank you all for doing that. You know, one of the things, if you look at the reports that are out there about the clear backpack policy and other school districts that have implemented it, generally the students don't like it. That, and so there's, it's just useful to hear from you guys. Your voices do matter to us, so thank you. Yes, uh, thank you um, all the way around. Um, first of all, I want to thank the administration for creating this moment so soon on the heels of that um, deliberation that we had in the last school board meeting. It was very clear that the board wanted to hear from students in schools and what I appreciated most from each of your presentations is you brought solutions. Mm -hmm. um, you made recommendations. And I can't tell you how many times in my own line of work where if I identify a problem, the expectation is that I don't complain about it, but that I bring a recommendation, that I bring a solution. And that's what y'all did tonight. Um, and that's, that's what we need to do our jobs to govern effectively. So. We look forward to hearing um, additional presentations um, on other issues that, that are um, of interest in your schools. Um, and I really appreciated the use of data um, as well. And so, um, again, thank you for all the work. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for standing up to, to represent and lead. Um, you make our jobs easier. So thank you. All right. Um, you all are welcome to stay. I don't know what the protocol is. Um, <laughs> um, and if there are other, ch other obligations, homework, tests, I know it's that season. Um, you're welcome to go do that, too. Um, but thank you. Um, all right. We are going to move on um, to uh, we have we do have a couple of other information only items. Um, the next item we'll take up is the review of the agreement between Mississippi Families for Kids and the Jackson Public School District. Uh, Amanda Thomas, our Executive Director of Climate and Wellness, will present this information. Ms. Thomas. All right. Good evening, board members. Dr. Green, it's a pleasure to present to you as an information item review of a, an agreement between Jackson Public Schools and Mississippi Families for Kids. The purpose of this agreement is to establish a working relationship between Mississippi Families for Kids and Jackson Public School District. Mississippi Families for Kids seeks to provide therapeutic services to pre-K through fifth grade scholars located at Johnson Elementary School. These scholars are those who exhibit emotional and behavioral problems. Services will be provided by licensed social workers, licensed counselors. Mississippi Families for Kids staff will conduct screenings and facilitate the day treatment located at the school on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays from 8 to 2 o'clock p.m. Um, currently, Mississippi Families for Kids does serve some families within the community. And because of that, they, they've seen some of the needs within that particular area. Um, they previously spoken to the staff um, for their, regarding some different concerns um, at Johnson Elementary as well. Um, please be reminded that um, Mississippi Families for Kids would be on site. And we do have some memorandums of agreement with other external partners, but they're not on site. And any of the scholars that would opt into this service would um, not be denied, even if insurance payment could not be made. I also want to recognize Ms. Fred Nika White, who is a, the executive director of um, Mississippi Families for Kids, one of the licensed social workers. I'm, 
Okay. Clinical director. Promoted. <laughs> any questions? Thank you, Ms. Uh, Thomas. Um, board members, any questions, comments? I have one question um, in addition to the ones. And thank you for the responses. Um, Site-based uh, um, counseling, um, could you just describe what that means? So on-site, meaning that they will actually they will actually have a clinical licensed um, social worker and case manager that will be in the space at Johnson Elementary um, on those particular days. Um, oftentimes we have case managers, licensed social workers that just come in and out based on the case loads. Um, so they service those children for 30 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes, whatever their, their particular plan um, entails. But these particular um, licensed social workers will be on campus during that time frame. Okay, so, so there'll be a certain number of days mm -hmm. a week for a certain time block where we'll have licensed social workers in Johnson Elementary. Correct. They and have office staff. This, yeah. this is exciting. It's very interesting. Um, are, we, is, are we treating this as a pilot project? Are we evaluating it? Um, is it a model for our other schools? Because um, it's obviously different. We've got mm -hmm. d dozens of other elementary so schools. So I would like to answer yes to all of those. Um, in talking to, of course, uh, Ms. White, um, the reason we are, uh, we actually ended up doing two years on, on this particular plan, but we always want to collect data to see if this is something that we can expand to other schools. And even with our other external providers, um, there has been discussion about on-site and um, other day treatments, so we definitely want to see how this works. We do have it on the secondary, and we need it on the elementary level as well. Great. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Right. And thank, thank you. you for being here this evening. All right, next we will move on to um, uh, discuss a review of our district test security plan. Uh, Dr. Lorenda Cheeks will present this information. She's our director of, he, no, sorry, Dr. Cormack is going to um, present this information. Good evening, Dr. Sivak, Dr. Green, members of the board, and my JPS colleagues. Um, the administration is presenting for your uh, review this evening the district test security plan. In preparation for this meeting, there were several questions that were asked around the differences, the main differences between this plan and last year's. Um, specifically, which protocols are in place to support the enforcement of the electronic communications device changes uh, that we have envisioned in this plan? So each school, mainly our middle and high schools, collect cellular devices from each student and place them in a bin. This is in accordance with guidance from the Mississippi Department of Education. Those devices are stored securely and returned to scholars after testing. To ensure that no devices are left in the testing environment, the school test coordinator collects electronic devices from each test administrator or proctor. And before beginning the test, the TA reminds students that all electronic devices, be they cell phones, smart watches, Fitbits, or other devices are not allowed. Um, and that's simply to avoid any temptation to uh, uh, to cheat or to be any in any ways academically dishonest, uh, also to avoid technological disruptions that might go off during testing that could disturb scholar focus. So those are the main changes that were envisioned in the plan, and there's also kind of a detailed accounting in each of the plans about the ways that uh, each school will provide for that. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. Board members, are there any questions or comments? I just want to. Um, say thank you for all the details that were provided around the procedures that are already underway, um, just both to make sure that, that this is implemented, that students are aware of it, and um, again, I just appreciate the, the, the responses to those questions. And so that you're aware, on Friday, we actually gather together with each of the school-based coordinators here in this space to review those changes to make certain that they have plenty of time uh, to implement them effectively in schools. Great. Thank you, Dr. Cormack. All right, next we have our monthly bond update. So we'll invite the dynamic uh, duo of Ms. Robinson and Ms. Franklin to um, give us the update. Good evening, Dr. Seebeck, board members, Dr. Green. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. At the first board meeting of each month, we do have the pleasure of providing the bond update. 
and tonight's presentation will provide construction updates, the bond financial update, and begin uh, transitioning us to, to our ESSER projects. Ms. Franklin will start us off with the construction updates. Good evening. Um, tonight we'll take a look at uh, some of our, our last few uh, remaining projects. At Walton Elementary School, we're finishing up our third set of boys and girls restrooms. Uh, these restrooms are, have received all new updated plumbing in the chase walls, new plumbing fixtures, uh, updated LED lighting, ceramic wall tile, epoxy floors, um, new partitions and accessories. At Provine High School, we have uh, four classrooms, the academy spaces that have been renovated. They've received uh, new LED lighting, new ceilings, paint, and new flooring. Uh, we're still continuing to make progress at Hughes Field. Uh, you may recall the photo on the far left. We saw it in our November update. Uh, we were excavating for our new bus loop. The two photos on the right show our, the concrete drive for the bus loop has been poured. Um, in the far right, we see also some of the asphalt for the parking lot has been, report, has been poured. We have had some delays in completing the asphalt um, just due to weather, the rain that we got over Thanksgiving. But we have started the asphalt, and we are expected to finish it up uh, this month in December. Um, next, oh, sorry. next uh, we'll take a look at all of the budgets for these projects. At Walton Elementary, uh, the budget that was listed on the bond fact sheet was $305,000. The actual bid amount for renovating three sets of boys and girls restrooms was $490,756. Expended to date is around $440,000 and we have about $50,000 left on that project. Um, the original date to finish those restrooms was September of this year. We did have some delays that pushed that project to uh, November, but it did finish up last month. At Provine High School, uh, these academy spaces, this was actually part of our larger project to renovate all of our libraries at our seven high schools plus Capital City. It also included academy spaces at um, all seven high schools. So uh, the bond fact sheet allocated a budget of $5,970,000. The actual bid amount came in at $2,767,000. And to date, we've spent about $2,607,000 well, $2, with $160,000 remaining for that project. And this has been one of our lingering projects, um, just the contractors has had multiple delays. We were actually supposed to finish all of our libraries last year this time, and we're just finishing up um, the academy spaces at Provine. But it, that is the last uh, portion of work for, for that particular project. So we are expecting to finish this month. At Hughes Field, we actually funded this project with uh, the bond premium and interest funds, and we allocated $4 million originally for that project, but the actual bid amount came in at $6,838,000. Um, to date, we've spent $5,918,000, and we have about $900,000 left um, to finish up that project. And like I said, we, um, we're basically down to the parking lot there. Uh, originally, we were scheduled to finish that project in September. Uh, due to some weather delays, um, it pushed it out to December. But we are expecting to finish it this month. Um, next, Ms. Robinson will give us an update on our overall uh, financials and also tell us how we're going to uh, lead into our ESSER projects. Thanks, Ms. Franklin. Um, board members, we have the pleasure of providing the bond financial update each month. As of December 5th, 2022, we have expended or encumbered over almost 95% of the bond funds. Um, we have expended 84%, which is up from 81% from the number of November 1, 2022 update. So that 84% uh, expended um, is about $61 million, over $61 million expended. 
The next three slides provide a school by school um, analysis of what the original budget was, the expenditures, the encumbered amounts, and the budget balance. <coughs> As we draw near to the end of the bond, we are now transi transitioning to the ESSER 2 and 3 projects. And this slide is just a recap. Um, for those who don't know what ESSER means, that is Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief Funds. And we're um, using two funds right now for construction projects, ESSER 2 and 3. The ESSER 2 is the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, and ESSER 3 is the American Recovery Plan. Back in June 2021 of this year, we did award the professional services agreements to design firms, and those firms were um, firms already on board for the bond. So they have been able to start quickly and accelerate in order to get our projects um, under, des under design. Also, as a recap, I want to make sure you know what those projects are, go are going to include. They will include indoor air quality upgrades. That includes HVAC system upgrades, new equipment, filters and control systems, window replacements, exterior door replacements, as well as focusing on our improving our water quality in our schools. That includes restroom renovations with touchless sensors, water and sewer line replacements, new kitchen plumbing, and water bottle filler stations. One of the other projects that we're going to target are outdoor learning environments. If you recall in the bond, we were going to install playground canopies but with this ESSER funding, we're be being able to expand and really um, um, target all the schools and provide some outdoor instructional opportunities with our new outdoor learning environments. This slide um, shows how we're transitioning from bond to ESSER. There were five um, priority uh, projects that we're able to get out to bid quickly. Um, they were Witten, they are Witten, McLeod, Wells, Bailey APAC and Pecan Park. These schools had um, some significant um, needs and, and based on uh, what was the bond initial budget, we weren't able to fulfill all those projects with the bond and the ESSER uh, funds are, will allow us to continue with those projects that were originally identified in the bond. For Witten, we will target restroom renovations right now. Um, McLeod, restroom renovations. Wells APAC, auditorium and restroom renovations. Bailey APAC, new roof, HVAC, and also restroom renovations, Pecan Park, HVAC upgrades, drainage and structural improvements, as, as well as um, some exterior envelope improvement for the building. Um, the checks show that we have completed the construction documents uh, have been received. We're in the process of re reviewing those for these projects. Witten Middle School restroom improvements are actually, um, that project is advertising now. Um, uh, three more projects that we have received um, construction documents, uh, well design development phase documents, are the Jim Hill High School re renovations, which will include a full HVAC upgrade in the main building, window replacements, and restroom renovations. We have also received uh, design development do documents for Brinkley Middle School and Powell Middle School, and those uh, scopes of work will inc include new chiller, and HVAC piping, some additional window replacements, um, and also restroom renovations. We are excited about um, being able to bring you um, in the next um, January report even more details of how we're um, um, about to advertise and go forth with those ESSER projects. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Franklin. Um, I don't, I don't have any questions. Um, I just uh, appreciate the work. I guess I have one. Uh, do we, will students be able to um, use Hughes Field starting January? Um, that is the plan with um, um, our athletic director to be able to have some soccer games there. Great, looking forward to that. A, a couple of simple ones and a comment. Look, it, it is amazing to see the progress where we are with this bond, especially for those of us who were out there stumping for it at the beginning and the doubt that was in our community that we could do this and do it effectively. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to this team to see where we are. Um, it looks like from at least the materials I have, I, I, we didn't get the fully updated uh, uh, thing in, our, in the board materials that um, 
um, that you just presented, but we're about $3.9 million left in the bond? Yes. Um, that's unencumbered, right? Is yes. That, um, what is our deadline to get those funds spent, and are we on track to getting it spent? Um, well, we are continuing to document the reasons why we have not um, um, spent all funds. The original um, bond issue, of course, was for, for have everything expended in three years. But through everything with COVID, right. um, we're accelerating and finding those additional projects that we will be using those uh, funds and working with um, our CFO to make sure that we um, get those uh, funds expended as quickly as possible. And is there a deadline to do that? Um, there was um, no definite deadline, okay. but we will. Uh, we are working with our to do it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yes, sir. Just uh, we're making sure that um, our bond attorney is assuring us that we will have a, a good case to make sure we get those funds expended. So there's really no press right now. We're just getting them done as quick as we can. Yeah, just just interested in knowing uh, that. I'm grateful to see that 95% is either spent or encumbered right now, and that's um, exciting. Uh, question about Bailey, um, and I'm glad to see we got ESSER funds coming to there. Do we have a guesstimate if we're on track to getting our kids back in that school eventually here on time with um, what we promised them when we took them out? Yeah, we initially promised uh, three years. Right. So we're on track for to getting them back. Cool. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next, board members, we will move on to the information action items uh, section of the board meeting. Um, the first request is for the approval of the renewal of the student blanket policy. Uh, Attorney Moore will present this information. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Um, board President Dr. Seebeck, Dr. Green, the Office of the General Counsel. Um, and risk management recommends that the board would approve the renewal of the annual student blanket professional liability insurance coverage for the Health Academy students at Lanier High School, and that insurance is with Mercer's consumer. Um, this is the same insurance policy that we had last year for our Health Academy um, students. The price of the insurance has gone down because the number of students in the program has decreased. The cost of that insurance premium for the year will be $239, and the um, policy includes coverage for up to $1 million for each occurrence or incident and up to $3 million in the aggregate. Are there any questions? Thank you, Attorney Moore. Board members, any questions? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Mr. Figures is seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you, Aye. Attorney Moore. Thank you. Next, we will move on to the. Um, Aye. <laughs> thank you. It's unanimous. Uh, next, we will move on to the request to approve the agreement between Learn Safe and the Jackson Public School District. Mrs. Mason, our Executive Director of Information and Technology Services, will present this information. Uh, good evening. Uh, tonight, we're recommending the approval of the contract in terms of service for the Learn Safe online student safety application to assist the district in monitoring student behavior and identify students that are at high risk. Thank you, Mrs. Mason. Board members, any questions? Ms. Mason, I do have a question. Um, so this is uh, software, as I understand it, to um, design to keep students safe in terms of their interactions online. Are there any, um, have we experienced or are we aware of any incidents online with the devices that we have provided to our students uh, that, that um, warrants this, this contract? Um, yeah, I think so. The issue is that the filtering technology that we have blocks them from accessing. And so this, the frightening thing is that kids who are thinking about self-harm, if they can't use our device to find it, they'll go use something, they'll find another way to do it. They'll find a website that will help them that we can't block because it's blocking is almost impossible. But because they're, and they're sharing information with their friends in a way that we can't see with the technology that we have. The LearnSafe platform allows um, the technology to scan what they're actually typing in real time. So for example, one of the best tricks in the world is the terrorism trick they used for 9-11, which is, I'm going to share an email password and I'm going to type in a draft email message and share it with other people. 
and so nobody sees it. So a student that might be considering some self-harm to themselves or to others, um, they'll do things to avoid detection, which is kind of scary because we want to help them. And so that allows us to immediately be able to alert counselors on site to assist with those students. So we'll have, so, so there'll be people who, who are monitoring this in real time? So the, it allow, the system is designed to let you set up um, kind of rules the way you want to do it. So depending on where you set your thresholds for notifications, so example, let's just say um, suicide is an immediate high risk behavior. The system will automatically alert the people on site through um, notifications, however you set it up, email, text messaging, with the name of the student, the issue, so they can immediately be addressed. Some lower, um, same thing with um, violence, drugs, things like that. You decide your own thing, it just imme or immediately alerts. Other things that are lower priority thresholds, you can kind of set to where somebody will get a, like a daily digest type thing. These are some things that we might be concerned about that we need to address. But we decide that as a district, with how we set those thresholds and those notifications. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments, board members? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I so move, Honorable President. Second. Mr. Figures has moved. Dr. Luckett has second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, we'll um, ha hear the request to approve the agreement between the Childhood <laughs> Hunger Initiative Power Pack and the Jackson Public School District. Dr. Kathleen Grigsby, our elementary assistant superintendent, will present the information. Good right. evening, President Seebeck, board members, Dr. Green, and JPS community. I'm bringing forth recommendation for the approval of an agreement between the Childhood um, Hunger Initiative Power Pack, otherwise known as CHIP, and Jackson Public School District. The program is designed to offer a supply of meals and snacks free of charge for students enrolled at Oak Forest Elementary over the weekends and or extended breaks. Each week, there will be a bag of food available for the distribution to each student enrolled in the program to be used over the weekend or holiday break. Oak Forest Elementary was selected for this agreement through the Rho Lambda Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha, who are currently their school adopters. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Grigsby. Board members, are there any questions, comments? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, next, we have the request. We're going to actually do take items D and E together. Um, the first is the request to approve the agreement between Hines County Hines Community College and the TRIO program. Um, and then the, the second is the request to approve the agreement between Tougaloo College, Tougaloo College, TRIO program, and the Jackson Public School District. Dr. Samicia Stokes, our Executive Director of the Office of Innovative Strategy, will present this information. Good evening. Good evening. To Board President Dr. Seebeck, Dr. Green, Board of Trustees members, and JPS colleagues. The administration is recommending the approval of an agreement with Heinz Community College Utica campus to support the federal TRIO program. Federal TRIO programs have a long history of supporting upward bound and upward bound math and science programming for first generation college students. The federal TRIO program at Heinz Community College is dedicated to assisting students from disadvantaged backgrounds who have the potential to succeed in higher education. The Office of Innovative Strategy welcomes this partnership of college-related services and resources in support of guiding high school students to complete secondary education. Students will participate in cultural, educational, and recreational activities. Upward Bound staff will assist in preparing a college prep plan for program participants. Workshops for students and their parents will be offered on college, university admission requirements, early planning, SAT, ACT, common core preparation, and financial aid assistance. Might I add that Dr. Shears, um, that might I add rather that Jackson Public Schools has already partnered with Dr. Shears at JSU, who secured a federal grant. 
and we are equally excited about the opportunity to partner with Heinz Community College. We urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Dr. Stokes, uh, can you also present, is the information the same for Tougaloo College or is there any uh, differences? There isn't a, well, there is a slight difference in that Tougaloo offers two additional programs. Uh, the one in particular is the Educational Talent Search Program, which is for middle and high school scholars. It assists students in matriculating from middle school, graduating from high school, and also preparing for post-secondary admission. And the other program is the Educational Opportunity Center Program, um, which provides students non-traditional or at risk of dropping out with assistance with academic academic opportunities, which include tutoring, career assessment opportunities, admissions to post-secondary institutions, and completion of financial aid applications. So those are the only two differences. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Board members, are there any additional questions, comments? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve items D and E? I so move. Second. Ms. Hilliard has moved. Mrs. Thompson has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. We appreciate your leadership as well. Um, next, we have the request to approve uh, an amendment, uh, the amended contracts for Bailey Education Group and the Kirkland Group. Uh, Dr. Regini Scott, our Executive Director of School Support, will present this information. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Board President Dr. Sivak. Board members, Dr. Green, and our JPS family. The administration recommends approval of the amended lead partner contracts for Bailey Education Group and the Kirkland Group for ad additional job embedded um, lead partner support for our teachers at Callaway, Forest Hill, Jim Hill, Lanier, Murrah, Provine, Wingfield, Smith, and McLeod. Great. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Board members, any questions, comments? Uh, Dr. Green. Say a word about why. Yes. So some of our, our principals and assistant principals um, have identified an additional need for support. Uh, we uh, originally, our principals, I'm um, sorry, our assistant superintendents tiered our, the support for each school. And the majority of them that need the support have already received that support for the first semester, but there's a need for additional support. And so we're going ahead and getting the contracts amended now so that, that there won't be a delay in the support that has been provided. Great. Thank you for the, the, the timely um, response on that. One question I was going to ask, was it also, um, were the, the, the adjustments also informed by the benchmark, the first benchmark data? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Board members, is there a motion to approve? So moved. I so moved. Second. I believe that was Ms. Hilliard uh, moved and Dr. Luckett second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. <laughs> Um, next, we have our last uh, information action item. Um, this is uh, the request to approve the agreement between Lobakai and the Jackson Public School District. Dr. Scott. Okay. So the administration is recommending review and approval of the service agreement for virtual reality equipment and pre-made content. So we are receiving uh, virtual reality equipment and content that will allow for our users to have access to an ever-growing content library of 3D models, 360 videos, uh, locations, and interactive scenes that are aligned to state curriculum standards. Students can explore virtual worlds, interact with objects, and or walk around virtual environments from all angles and perspectives to engage in meaningful experiences that create pathways for knowledge and um, retention. So we received a few questions beforehand, if you would like for me to um, talk about those responses. Please, um, we were asked about the existence of virtual reality at the Career Development Center, and so yes, we do have it. Um, and then we were also uh, asked to provide an update on its use. Um, and so virtual reality equipment is used across the curriculum for all programs at the Career Development Center. All teachers plan with the virtual reality manager on site so that they can assign content that is allowed to uh, what has been taught in those courses. And so students engage in virtual reality experiences and then they are assessed 
following each of those experiences. Now, uh, the next question was, how do we intend to in integrate the use of the equipment and its extensive curriculum um, into existing schedules? So uh, that was twofold um, because some of our elementary schools are proposing to implement it differently because of the uh, schedule differences. So in our elementary schools, virtual reality equipment and content will be implemented into existing computer lab and library classes. Um, all of our third through fifth grade teachers will plan with uh, the computer lab technicians and librarians to ensure that the content that is uploaded to those devices aligns to the standards that are taught in the classroom. So students can engage in virtual reality experiences each time their class rotate through library or the computer lab. And so in some of our schools, it can happen as often as a one time every week or two weeks. And so that's for our elementary schools. And so in our secondary schools, it's a bit different. Um, some of our principals are planning to implement this uh, by department, by grade level. So it, it lends itself to a variety of ways that they're doing that. Um, so I have an example for what one of our principals at the middle school level has planned to do. So um, they want to implement this for science, science only to begin with. And so there will be one lab of which the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade science teachers will have to share. So they will have to schedule time for their classes to go in and engage in the sessions. And so um, that's how it looks in one school. And so. It may look differently. Right now we have 11 schools uh, to start with virtual reality equipment and content. And so as more principals are requesting to implement in their schools, then we'll have different ways that they're implementing it. Great. Thank you, Dr. Scott, for providing that um, update and, and the example as well. I mean, it's, it's clearly, um, and this is today, I mean, this is what our students are doing. And um, it's exciting that we get to offer it in the schools. Um, the list of content was pretty amazing. I mean, it had like operations and like like medical operations and procedures and um, so just, you know, and that was like one thing on a page of like 50 of like 10 pages. So it's really exciting to see all the, the opportunities and things that, that um, our students will potentially have access to. So thank you for um, bringing this to us tonight. All right, board members, um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I so move. Mrs. Thompson has moved. Dr. Harrison has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was, that was uh, Ms. Thompson, I believe, seconded. S say that again, Dr. Harrison. I think it was Ms. Thompson that seconded it, not me. Okay. So, just I, I, I made the motion. This, this is Cynthia. Ms. Thompson. And I second the motion. Ms. Hilliard seconded. Okay, thank you, Dr. Harrison, for the clarification. I'll get it one of these days. Um, so, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion carries. Um, next, board members, we have the consent agenda item finance. Uh, all the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously, and we've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? I so move. Second. Uh, Mr. Figures has moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. And next, we have the consent agenda item general. All of the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously. We've had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Dr. Luckett has moved. Mr. Figures has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Um, next, we have the consent agenda item personnel. All the consent agenda items have been reviewed by the board previously and had an opportunity to ask questions of the administration. Are there any further questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? 
I so move. Second. Mr. Figures have moved. Dr. Luckett has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Uh, all right, board members, we do have uh, two items to consider for executive session this evening. Is there a motion? There's more? There's three. Three? three. Okay, there's three items. Um, is there a motion to close the, executive, the, the meeting to consider an executive session? So moved. Very good. Dr. Luckett has moved. Ms. Vegas has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank great you. evening. For the land of the free and the hope of the, the brave. Please assist me in reciting the cadet creed. I am an Army Junior ROTC 